Vishud, Vishuddhi or Vishuddha as it's called, Vishuddhi as I've said many times essentially means a filter. Vishuddhi is one dimension that we normally skip because if you become active in Vishuddhi, one dimension of this is that you become occult competent. Occult essentially means if your energies are centered in Vishuddhi or reasonably some mastery over your Vishuddhi, you start functioning in a, a different level of competence that people around you think you are superhuman. But all that's happened is you have accessed other ways to function. So, in many ways, Adi Yogi is a representative of that, so representative of that that there are so many names which are around his Vishuddhi. He's called Vishakanta, he's called Nilakanta, like this. There are many names representing him as an embodiment of Vishuddhi. Not because that's the only quality he had. People recognize only those things because something beyond their understanding happened. See, <laughs> if you say Jesus, we don't know what all he did, people did not record, there was no Jennifer, nor was there Ananda Tirtha. They didn't record what he said, what he did. But if you say Jesus, first thing will people will say is he walked upon water. Like that, Shiva is… Adi Yogi or Shiva is famous for things that he did which other people thought are impossible or beyond normal capability. So, people started recognizing him for his Vishuddhi capability. His other capabilities were too subtle for them to notice. Something beyond their understanding what they thought was normal should happen. So, something weird should happen. Vishuddhi… <laughs> if you… if you put people on the Vishuddhi sadhana, you will develop a lot of weirdos. Weirdo means just this. You every day scraped your face, somebody did not. In your understanding, he's a weirdo. Suppose everybody in the society cut their nose off. Something or the other is being cut off when children are born. <laughs> Let's say one society developed this habit or this tradition or a sacred tradition that if nose is cut off when the child is born, you… the child will inhale and as an adult also you will inhale twenty-two percent extra oxygen. much healthier, much better, you won't need a tissue. <laughs> Eco-friendly it is, <laughs> many things. <laughs> so if this happened, suddenly if one person came with a intact nose, suddenly he will look like a weirdo. If once Vishuddhi becomes active, these kind of energy capabilities will come through which one can create many things. It's very important if one wants to transmit and transform the situations around them, having a certain capacity of the Vishuddhi is very, very important. But if one is focused on Vishuddhi, it's a little hard for them to fit into the social structure. You have uh, definitely heard of stories of Adi Yogi, sometimes he's uh, very resplendent, magnificent representation of a male person. Some other times he's all weird and crazy and like that. These descriptions are talking about the different states in which they saw him. 
When they saw him in Vishuddhi, he was in the cremation ground, weird, the weirdest of the weird. He had the ganas around him and every kind of being because this is one thing that'll happen. The moment Vishuddhi is active, disembodied beings will naturally move towards you. When we were consecrating Dhyanalinga, I was preparing people for different chakras, but Vishuddhi is one thing I could not train anybody for because we didn't have anybody weird enough. <laughs> we had weird people, but not weird enough for a quick transformation, the time… having a time constraints, the kind of time constraints we had at that time. So I decided to use a certain disembodied being, a yogi who's attained to a certain level, strong in the Vishuddhi, so we decided to use him. The moment we started doing this, one thing is, up one particular cobra, we are about four hundred people gathered in the night and uh, he just… we don't know how he crawled through this crowd, nobody noticed him. And he came… he comes there and comes into one small pit that I have made to do something. He comes and sits in that pit. Then I see this guy is uh, trying to have a free ride with me <laughs> Then I pick him up and put him in a bag and tell them, go leave him in the forest. So they put him outside and come another few hours, again he's back there in the same pit. <laughs> he wants to be there because he sees it's his chance. You see, around his neck also, because this is… all this symbolism is a science of trying to give you a certain language. It's a certain map of how to go, how things happen. When you wish… when I used to meditate for long hours, I either sat in… sometimes in Chamundi Hill, otherwise there's a small forest called Aloka in my… so when I sat there, gen… I don't know why I always chose afternoons, I never sat in the morning, sometimes late nights, but mostly in the afternoons for some reason. If I sat in the afternoons and meditated for a few hours and opened my eyes, there would be twelve, fifteen cobras in front of me, all sitting there and waiting for a free ride. They, the moment Vishuddhi becomes active, they will be there. That is the significance, that it's around his neck, because Vishuddhi is active. The, the symbolism or the imagery is trying to say, his Vishuddhi is so active, the cobra won't leave his neck, it's right there. Disembodied beings will naturally come. Once again, Vishuddhi is something that we normally skip with most people because one who is looking for realization, he need not go through all these works. But one who wants to explore the technologies of life, one who wants to transmit, one who wants to become capable enough to be able to hold and be some kind of a repository for the future, that one has to go through all this.